Hey everybody, my name is Patrick Jager along with Aaron Bailey and welcome to another edition of What Do You Need to Know to Move to Costa Rica? Today's topic, I don't know if you just heard the car horn behind Aaron, but today's topic is one that we all deal with and it's one that actually has some of the most negative scores related to Costa Rica and that is driving in Costa Rica. Um, lots to talk about here, Aaron, take it away. My favorite topic, I love, love, love driving in Costa Rica, but not everyone does, right? Uh -huh. You have to be a little adventurous. Driving here is a little insane, depending on where you're at. In, in San Jose, it's a little insane. Out in the middle of nowhere, it's not too bad. Uh, but we're going to go through a whole bunch of reasons why, things, considerations that you need to know before you get in the car in Costa Rica. I think the biggest one and this is uh, appropriate for right now because it is the rainy season, is weather. Mm -hmm. Weather is unpredictable. Driving in insane rain is not advisable. Don't do it. Uh, if it's sunny out, great. If it's at night and raining, don't even bother. Just, just stay home. Yeah, and, and weather is, you know, the thing about weather in Costa Rica is that it is beautiful and then it's just nuts. And you just don't know. So be prepared. When you do drive in Costa Rica, make sure you have rain gear with you. Make sure you have, uh, you know, uh, roadside hazard should you need it. But also be okay with getting off the road. Um, a yeah. lot of people just yeah. pull over on the side of the freeway. Not smart at all. Um, I, I personally haven't had a day where I can't drive, but there have been a couple of times I'm like, why the hell am I out right now? Yeah. Yeah. Especially if it's a, a long and windy road and we'll get into road conditions and, yeah. and terrain later. But if it's, if you're, if you're going from a, a quick five minutes down the road in the rain, that's fine. If you are going somewhere unknown in the mountains, just stay home. Well, Don't let's, no, let's just go right into road conditions. I mean, sure. this is one of the big things for, in Costa Rica, people think of roads as the problem. They are. I, we're going to talk about drivers being the problems in a bit, but the roads themselves, there's there's a couple of challenges with the roads. They're very windy because of the topography of Costa Rica. They're very narrow. Shoulders are narrow. Lane width is narrow. Um, and they the road conditions themselves, depending on where you are, there are a lot of potholes. And And the way to think about all of this is, you know, when you live in a big North American city, you have a reason when millions of people are commuting on the roads, you have a reason to keep the infrastructure up uh, quite a bit. When you have a mountainous country of 5 million people, you don't have the tax system by which to perpetually be filling potholes. Remember, it rains every day so potholes are created and there are boulders that come off of off of hillsides and things you things are going to be bad it doesn't mean that they don't care it doesn't mean that they're lazy it just means that that's they haven't gotten to that yet um you know especially in rural areas things are windy and slow and and narrow and you just have to know that that's the way it is you can't fix that you have to learn to live with it. And I think you and I both have kind of learned to enjoy it. For Avita, you just enjoy Pura. it. For Avita. Yeah. So let's talk about um, my favorite topic, uh, <laughs> aggressive drivers. You've, you've uh, called me from the road uh, yelling at other drivers before because they're so aggressive. Um, yeah, yeah, people are aggressive here. They're offensive drivers. They're not defensive drivers. Uh, you kind of have to get in that flow. Uh, otherwise, mm -hmm. otherwise, you will get hit. You will get um, run over. Like, you, just, just, you got to really be aggressive here. Well, I don't know if you should tell everybody you're going to get run over, but I mean, I think there's a couple of things. No. Okay. There's fine. a couple of things. There's a couple of things to know. I mean, yeah, Puerto Vida, this kind of laid back lifestyle is not true on the roads. It is very yeah. like cutthroat. But the other, one of the things to know is that um, not only are people aggressive, but the rules of the road, like merging, you know, yeah. in the States, we zipper, I go, then you go, I go, then you go. That is not true here. People will hug the side of the road and try to see how far up they can squeeze. People will not let you in. Right. Um, again, some people love it. Uh, my spouse hates it and won't drive, just refuses. Yeah. I kind of dig it. 
but you did, really do yeah. have to be on, you know, on, as you said, on the offense. And you also need to know that a lot of the people that are driving, most of the people that are driving are uninsured. So right. because of that, they're being aggressive. You need to know when to not be aggressive and let them go because you do not want to your point, get hit. Or they're on motorcycles and they're going to zip in and, and around you. Um, you'll have like four motorcycles zipping around you. So you just have to, you have to be careful. You have to be vigilant and watch, but also be aggressive, be of, uh, offensive and you'll be just fine. Well, and, and you talk about people zipping in and out. Lane discipline, as we said, is just not a thing here. Um, neither is traffic enforcement. They know they can get away with it. So with lane discipline, you know, um, it is funny. There are some places where it goes from three lanes to one lane like that. And there will be, there'll be say the signs that say these two are merging. Um, people don't necessarily pay attention to that. Again, all, most of that has to do with topography. All of a sudden you're yep. going through a, a cut in a hill. They have to narrow down because they don't have the money to widen that up. They can't yep. expand a bridge over a chasm like that. So exactly. Um, but because of this lack of lane discipline, that's really, I think, the challenge. It's not speeders. It's it's no. the lane discipline and the fact that they know that in most cases they can get away with it because there just isn't enough of a police right. force that is on the traffic side to enforce things. Yeah, the, the traffic cops are few and far between. They're out there, but they're very rarely will you ever get pulled over um, for speeding uh, for um, for violating a rule. Uh, it's just not, a, not much of a thing here. I mean, we've both been pulled over. Well, um, I was pulled over for illegal parking, which I still think was a scam. You uh, were pulled yeah. over for passing in a double yellow line, which I also think is a scam. Um, it's a double yellow line. Well, yes, but the car in front of me was going five miles an hour. Uh, and I think the car in front of me was in on it with the cop <laughs> because as soon as I pulled away, he pulled over another person immediately behind me. So I think he had a little racket going. I will not state publicly how that, uh, traffic stop got resolved. Um, but if you'd like to know, shoot me an email at hola at your and I'll give you the whole story. I think this is going to be fascinating to see how many people respond. <laughs> it's actually, you know, we should talk, we should think about making that a topic because it is something that is mm -hmm. important. I won't, we'll leave it at that. We'll um, leave it at that. Okay. We've talked about road hazards. We've talked about, um, we've talked about zipping of cars. Let's talk about the other two big hazards in the country, animals and people. Yes. So many people walk here. They'll be walking down the street at 10, you know, it gets dark at five thirty, six 6 o'clock every night. And so they're, they're coming home from work and they're walking alongside the highway. Uh, and if you are not paying attention, you will hit someone. So you got to be careful on that. Yeah. I've had, I've twice, there's a, there's an entrance ramp to the highway um, near the airport or near city mall in Aguila. And the entrance ramp, it's a curve. And it immediately, once you've hit the curb, once you've got to the top of the curb, you were on the freeway. So you have to be looking for, is a car coming? And yep. you can't, like, it's hard to be looking back for a car and also looking to see if a pedestrian is trying to cross in front of it. And yep. yeah, pedestrians just like, they, they have it down. It's kind of like that Tokyo interchange where everybody just mm -hmm. goes across in a weird mass. People walk the freeways. People also um, sell things while you're driving on the freeways, like between right. lanes. So you do have to be careful with that. Animals, again, I don't think you have this issue if you're in the Central Valley, but yeah, if you are on your on the windy road to Le Mans on the highway, or you're yep. you know in the middle of nowhere in Guanacaste, yeah, you also have to watch out for animals for sure. Right, and a lot of dogs. A lot of dogs are just roaming out and about before they go home and they'll be hanging out. They'll even like sleep in the street. Um, and they'll sometimes wake up when you come, but other times they're just kind of hanging out. So you just have yeah. to be careful. So the next one is traffic congestion. And, you know, I've lived in very traffic congested areas as have you. And mm -hmm. is it LA traffic congestion? No. Is no. it traffic congestion? 
Absolutely. Is it frustrating? Absolutely. You just know certain times a day, try not to go certain routes. Um, there are not enough roads for some of the more traveled areas. It's like trying to get to Malibu on PCH. Like you're going to be in traffic whether you want to be or not because there's just yeah. a finite amount of road space. Yep. Welcome to Costa Rica. I mean, when I'm going to the beach uh, on a weekend that everyone has off, a long weekend, that a uh, holiday weekend that everyone, everyone has off, it can – you know, normally it's a two hour drive. It can go up to four hours. Sometimes you just got to yeah. roll the punches and realize that it's, it's, it all works out. I liken it to, uh, my house in Colorado, you know, you going up to a, going up to a ski area on a Saturday in Colorado, you're going to be in bumper, bumper traffic all the way up by 70 going to the beach, as you said, on a Friday afternoon, a Saturday or a Sunday, or coming home from the beach on a sun, Saturday night or a Sunday night. You just have to know that's what you're going to do. And, yep. and again, this is part of the reason why we've had another, we've talked to you in other videos. People are a little more laissez faire about coming and going times because they know that traffic, it's kind of like the excuse in LA is always, oh, I was in traffic. That same thing can be said in Costa Rica, uh, traffic. Absolutely. This weekend is a long weekend here. I'm going to go to the beach on Saturday, not on Friday. And I'm going to come back on Tuesday and not on Monday. Yeah. It works. Okay, next one, um, you living in the bigger city than I have this more than, than I have it, which is lack of parking. Yes, there's, there is not enough parking spaces in uh, Costa Rica, thankfully, because who wants to live in a country full of parking spaces? Yeah. Um, but you just have to adjust and, and, and go a little bit early and realize that it might take you 15, 20 minutes to find a parking space. Um, or you might have to pay for a, a parking lot, um, but it's really not a problem. No, I mean, it's a problem at certain times. Like in San Jose proper, there are certain days you cannot drive. Um, my license plate means I can't drive on Thursdays. Are you Thursdays? Wednesday. You're Wednesdays. So from 7 to 7, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m., I can't drive on Wednesdays. Which means that you also can't park. <laughs> Um, and it's for congestion reasons, but it's, you know, you just, it's things like that. You just, once you learn them, you learn them. But the other thing is Ubers and taxis are right. ample. So right. you don't need to drive. You don't need to park. And often Uber is cheaper than parking. So mm -hmm. often I will take an Uber somewhere instead of driving somewhere and paying $20 to park. Yep. Um, last one is something that you've experienced, but I haven't, which is roadside assistance. It's not that we don't have AAA here. Uh, sort of. I've heard that there is a service, but I've, who knows if it actually works. Uh, I hit a pothole at 1030 at night one night. Uh, it was downpouring rain. Again, don't drive in the rain. Completely uh, blew out my tire. Had very little cell signal. It was probably my lowest moment in Costa Rica in the, in the time I've lived here. Um, wanted to, to give up and fly home uh, back to the United States, but I stuck it out. Uh, it all worked out. Um, but well, how yeah. did it work out? How, how did it work out? Like, what did you have to do? Well, I could, I, I was, it was a rental car. And so I couldn't find the jack, uh, everything else I could find. So the rental agency didn't provide the, the jack. Uh, so, but I was able to WhatsApp uh, a friend who told me about a guy who could come in and fix it. That guy was not available, but he knew a guy, of course, who eventually showed up like 30 minutes later um, and within two minutes had my spare on, uh, no problem. So, you know, now that I own a car, I have all the equipment and I know exactly what I'm doing, but just be prepared for things like that because yeah. um, they'll come up. And, it, and apparently our my insurance company, the same insurance company that you use yeah. also does roadside assistance. I've yeah. never used them. I, I probably should figure out how to to call them if I need to. Um, but it's a thing I, here. I can, yeah, on that you, there's a number that you have and it's a, it's a WhatsApp number and, um, and they will coordinate and they'll stay with you on the phone and, and yeah, all the insurance companies have it. There are private companies Depending on where you are, if you're on one of the big highways, there are right. tow trucks, 
all throughout and there are scouts that go back and forth. So they know there are certain areas that they know people have a tendency to stall out or overheat. Yep. And there you can find assistance more. The biggest rule of thumb, I think, is have someone in your WhatsApp contacts that you can call that that can help coordinate. Someone at yep. Tico, most importantly, have the number for your insurance and know that it's going to take longer than it does in the States. You, you might be right. out there for a couple hours. Yep. But it all works out. I really hope that all of this doesn't stress you all out. I mean, this isn't, none of this is made to be like doom and gloom. Oh, don't drive in Costa Rica. Costa Rica driving compared to driving in Thailand, where I got in a really bad accident, um, certain parts of Europe, it's fine. It's not hard. It's not bad. There's just some inherent differences that you have to know and you have to be willing to accommodate. If you do that, I think you'll find that it's a fun place to drive. Um, the drives are beautiful. Um, yeah, stunning. That, that is one thing. If you're driving with someone, if you want to look, have them drive so you can look. Don't look. Absolutely. Right, um, right. But, you know, if you have more questions on this topic, uh, reach out to us as Aaron said, Ola at yourprotovita.com. You can also find out everything that we have on yourprotovita.com backslash links. You can get to our blogs, to our YouTube channel. You are already at our YouTube channel, but if you want to see more, um, all the different services we provide. Our whole goal at Your Puerto Vida is to help people discover this country. Is this the right country for you? And can I thrive here? If the answer is, I need some help, we are here to help you. If not, take this information for what it is. We want to be part of your community and we want you to be part of ours. So also hit the like button, subscribe. Um, We're excited to bring you more topics. If you have ideas for topics, let us know. And as always, Pura Vida. Pura Vida.